Right, so welcome back to another Bitwig video on this channel. And in this one, we need to talk about comping. And I'm pretty sure you already know what comping is. If you don't know, you're gonna learn right now. But I'm gonna show you different ways of using comping. Now, not just the usual way of just recording takes and selecting the one that sounds the best. Now, before you ask, there's no MIDI comping. It's just audio. Now, maybe they will just delight us and add it, uh, you know, uh, support it on the version 5 or maybe 4 point something of Bitwig, but uh, so far it's not supported. Now, if you're watching this in the future, maybe it's supported. Who knows? Right, so you have many ways of using comping, not just one one way. The first one, uh, the most basic one, is the recording live, the one that maybe you know. So right here, I have a guitar, an audio track. And this one is listening to one of my uh, my channels, is the uh, four now. So if I turn on if I, the volume, I have a guitar right here, so. It's just a guitar, and it's going clean to uh, the uh, the preamp, and then I'm using Amplitude. I'm using a version of Amplitude, it's the 5, and it's a Fender sound. So because I think, you know, it matches this project. And I have a, you know, a tiny track with the drum and bass in the background. If I play it, it's gonna be very basic. It just sounds like that. So what I want to do, I want to record something on top of this. Right, and we want to do that comping. Now, first of all, I'm gonna be selecting, we have a four vars right here, I'm looping. So you just need to arm your track and start recording. Let's do one more. So I'm gonna stop it. Now, as soon as you do this, when you're doing comping, and it shows you an icon right here on the top, you know, hand, the top hand right corner, uh, what you do, you just double click it, uh, double click it, and it's gonna take you right here, and it's gonna show you all the takes. Now, the takes no take number four is the last one I did. I'm gonna remove it. So we have four uh, different takes, the first one, and then the, the one, the two, and the three, actually. So again, you have four different ways of doing this. You can go to this one and you can click right there and it's gonna move up or you can just right, go right here and just paint whatever section you want and it's just gonna be selecting the whole take, right? So this is what we want to do. So now we are just listening to this part. I need to disable this and I'm gonna go down in volume. So now we are listening to this take. Now, maybe I want to do this. I'm going to be selecting this part. And there we go. We are selecting, we are hearing this version. Or maybe I'm just selecting the take number three because it sounds best. Right. So that's it. That's the only thing you need to do. Now, instead of using it like this, because it's the usual way, what you could do, you can uh, select different parts or different combination of different things. For example, right now, uh, I'm playing something very similar, but if I play something different, we just can start combining the different parts. And I'm gonna be doing it right now. Just gonna delete this take. I'm gonna go all the way right here. And I'm gonna hit record one more time. And I'm just gonna record different takes doing different things. So I'm gonna do record and I'm gonna do play. Two, three, four.
Okay, so that's fine. So I've recorded different parts of the same thing. It was a little bit too boring. You know, it's a little bit boring. But now what we can do, we can double, we can double click or triple click. And it's gonna take us right here. Now, the main point of doing all of this is that now what we can do, we can select different parts and make a combination and get a very unique sound. Instead of just using it the usual way by selecting one take or the other take, we could just select different parts, even randomly, and just get, you know, different variations or an unexpected variation. So, okay, so right here we have the take number one. So maybe I'm gonna be selecting this and what you just need to do, you just need to paint it. And it's just gonna be playing that part first. If I play it, we have the first part and then just some other take, which in this case is gonna be the take number six. But maybe I just don't want this. I may be gonna be doing this one or maybe like that. And it's just gonna do it. Maybe I'm gonna be selecting this and I'm just going randomly. I'm not tutoring what we are gonna be getting. Alright, uh, let me select this. And again, we're just fooling around with this and expecting the unexpected. Alright, you know, I can like that one. So, right. So you can use it like this, just uh, record something uh, multiple times, do different variations of, you know, pretty much what, whatever you want to do. And then you just go randomly and you select the parts that you want to and make a collage. That's another way of using comping. So you have tiny little tricks that you can do right here. So if I stand on this one, on this, uh, on this take, and I use the arrow keys, I can move to, through the arrow keys and uh, going up is going to take me up and going down is just going to take it down. And if I go to the left, the right, it's going to go to the next one and we can go up and down. And just like that, while doing even play, we can just select different things, different parts when you uh, break it. All right? Okay. So that's one thing that, that's one thing that you can do. Now, let's say I want to adjust this part. I'm going to go select this. I'm going to do Alt. And while I'm holding, that is, it's just giving us, and I, we can do it even right here. While I'm holding, it's showing me that icon. This means I can nudge this. So when I move it, it's just going to move the, t the take behind the, behind the scenes. I can adjust it just to, you know, to make it uh, play in the pocket. Maybe not so much, but you know, again, I just can move it right here, maybe. And see how it sounds. Yeah, more or less. And you can, you know, again, hold the alt. You just can nudge your takes and see what, what's going on with this. All right. Now, if I go right here to the bottom and I do alt and I do shift at the same time, I'm holding alt, shift. And if I drag it now, it's going to move the whole thing. So, you know, be careful because this one is dangerous. So, yeah, it's just a sliding or just nudging uh, all, the, all the takes. Now, if you position right here at the breakpoint of something, you can you get you know those icons right here, so you can just adjust the take just like we did before instead of doing it from here. And right here, you're gonna be playing a uh, space pretty much. All right, so some parts are gonna be louder than other ones. So maybe this one is just a little bit too loud. So right here, if you go all the way to the top, you just can go down and gain and just you know level everything just to make it fit a little bit better. So yeah, you can do that. All right. So it's a great creative tool. So the first uh, way of using this is just to record the same take and then select the best parts. The other way of using this is just play uh, variations, different variations of whatever you want to do and then just make a collage. All right, so I'm gonna uh, go right there at the bottom. And what we want to do, we want to fall to takes, but we want to do it on the clip launcher. Now, it's just not gonna work if I stop and I record this and I record something. Notice that it just keeps going. So it has no idea when to 
stop. So it's not the same thing. Now, what we need to do, we need to provide the instruction to the clip launcher that we want to uh, do takes. And right here, I have an option. And it's because when you go to play, if you go at the bottom right there, it says record as comping takes. Now, this is for the clip launcher. So when I enable this, it's going to enable this one. Now, if you pin it, is going to be right there at the top, right? So if you don't have, you don't have it, you can pin it. Now you need to uh, tell the clip launcher, and this option is for is for the clip launcher. Uh, you need to decide how many bars you're going to be uh, bars you're going to be playing. You know, you're going to be uh, doing because every each uh, four bars is going to start a new take. Now if we have this enabled and we start recording, uh, we will have something like this. I'm going to record. That's enough. So, okay, so if I double click, no, notice that we get the icon of takes. And if I double click it, we get it. And if I uh, just remove the last one, we have the two takes. So now you can record takes on the launcher. Now I'm gonna delete this, we don't need it anymore. And I'm gonna bring this, if I play it, we have the guitar, which is fine, but I'm just gonna want it lower, low in volume. Right, so what I want to do, I want to show you different ways of using the uh, using the comping because so far we know we could use it to record the same take over and over again, and that's just to select the best part out of uh, that you know unique uh, unique take, or you just can play a variation of different things and then just select parts and make a combination. That's you know the two ways we know. Now you have other ways of doing this. For example, we can bring a sample sound and we can fold it to takes and then just use the same principle like this you know just move it around to shift it and make a combination of different parts and get something new all right so i'm gonna be double clicking this and i'm gonna go right here now if i go to my samples i have it ready uh i'm gonna be using this uh track it's gonna be percussion and glitch and all the samples that i have right here you can get them free you know they come free with bitwick all right so what do i want to do and the longest the, the longer the better i'm gonna drop this sample right there and if I play it again, it's just going to be the same sample, right? Okay. So what we want to do, we want to do something like this. All right, so what's the next step? We need to fold it to takes. I'm going to right click the track and then fold to takes. And I'm going to fold it. And since we are folding something, you know, we are dividing the things and just folding them, it's going to ask you how many takes would you like to create? In this case, I want four takes. Now, this sample lasts four bars. If we divide it in four takes, it's going to be one bar per take. If I do OK, it's going to give us that. We just have one, but we do have the comping. And if we take a look at the right here at the bottom, we have four different takes. The, uh, the whole uh, sample, you know, the whole thing. Now it's four different takes. So if I play this, it's just gonna sound like this. And then it dies, but we can go right there and just loop this and make it longer. Now, what's the point of doing all of this? We can do the same thing with it with the guitar. We just can just start shifting parts and just get different, uh, different sounds. So for example, I'm gonna go right here, gonna select this one, but then I'm gonna be uh, maybe right there on this uh, break point, just gonna be selecting this, but I don't want this. I just want a different part. I don't want the same. So I'm just going to be moving maybe this and just start getting different different things, right? Just different sounds. Maybe I just want to paint uh, this part. I'm going to be going right there and just doing something like this. And I'm going to be going here and just trying to find something that gets, gets me a variation that I want. Fine, sounds glitchy, uh, glitchy, but that's fine. Maybe I'm gonna go right there. And again, we can just start moving this one and find something we like. And this, you know, sometimes takes time. And we can just, again, make a, make a collage. Just have fun, you know, that's the whole point. I'm gonna like that one. I have a play with an overall, right? And it's completely different, right? Now you can 
do something like this with maybe a single arrangement, you know, a single thing, a single thing that sounds pretty much the same every, you know, every single time. It's just pretty classic. And just get something new by being creative with comping. Right. So then you have the other way, so an alternative way, which is bringing different sounds, not just working with the same sound. So I'm going to be going to the favorites, and I have a lot of sounds right here. And I'm going to be maybe first using this one. It sounds like this. This is normal. And all of these sounds are pretty different and percussive sometimes. And all this, all the sounds come uh, from Bitwig, you know, the main library. All right, so just different sounds. And we can go crazy right now. Just gonna go experimental. I'm gonna be throwing this one right here. And when we uh, select it, you know, it's pretty long. We just can make it shorter in this case. And I'm gonna be double clicking this. And what we can do on this one, we can just do comping. And when you go to comping, right here it says no takes, but this doesn't mean that you must, you know, you, you don't have takes. You just can bring different parts and just uh, do the same thing we did before. Just to start chopping it and, you know, getting uh, just a combination of different parts. And again, right here, we just can go completely random. If I play this, it's gonna give us this, right? But maybe I don't want this. What we can do is a combination of this. Maybe I want this part. And then just, again, go crazy. I'm gonna make it just a little bit bigger. And just close this one. There we go. Right. Let's just go crazy. I'm going to be selecting different parts. Just randomly. Now let's see what we get. And then we just can shift it, nudge it. We can do whatever we want right here. And that's it. We go experimental. There we go. Really crazy. Well, that's good. You know, sometimes it sounds sounds cool. It sounds fun, right? I'm gonna do this one. And there you go. So you can bring different sounds and just go crazy. Now, of course, all of this is just very loud. I'm gonna go down in volume. All right, so with the volumes just in a better better position, it just sounds a little bit better. But the main point of all of this, of this video, is to show you that you have uh, different ways of using comping. It's not just for recording your instrument and then selecting the best part. You just, you can use it on a more creative way and just get more, you know, uh, get more out of this uh, feature. So if you liked all this and you learned something new, remember to like and subscribe. And if you have the money and you want to buy me a coffee, you can go to the links at the description. You have a YouTube thanks, you have Patreon, and you have PayPal, right? So see you on the next one.